Hello everyone, my name is Sugarcane Defender, back with another small tutorial on my Z-Wave software. Today I'm going to be showing you the different settings for the transcription. Uh, what the transcription is, if you don't know, it's basically what converts your spoken voice and your word into text for your bot to understand. And I'm gonna be showing you a couple of the new configurations that I've recently installed. Uh, some of them can speed it up up to four times as fast. I'm also gonna be showing you the chunky settings so that it can take in your audio and process it into chunks as it goes instead of all at once at the end. Uh, there's some trade-offs to doing that, but generally it's better. And I'll also be showing you the different models because uh, I don't think I've explained that before, and that can be important. But yeah, let's get into the video. So right here, this entire time I've been talking, I've actually been recording. Unmodified version, with the chunking off, no turbo or anything. It's going to take a little while for it to process. So I stopped recording right there. This is on a 3080 Ti, which is a decent laptop GPU. But yeah, it's still processing. And if we look, yeah, it just got done with that. So that took a little while. So I guess we'll start off with the Whisper model. Uh, as you see, it says enter your Whisper model CV RAM requirements for further details at the Whisper GitHub. Right here, I have tiny, base, small, tiny.en, and base.en. So let me go ahead and pull that up. So right here is the chart. By default, I have base.en currently on the program. The .en means it'll only do English, but it's way better translation quality because it's only English, like it doesn't have to train on all these languages. I think medium is just as good as base.en in English, but it's one fifth the VRAM and roughly twice the speed. Need something other than English, then you'll probably want one of these multilingual models. It's the only option. I don't think tiny would be good. You're gonna need at least base or small, but yeah, there's definitely a tax if you're not English, because they don't have specifically trained models. Also, shout out, this is uploaded by OpenAI. People always say OpenAI, it's not open. This is good. I'm glad they released this. Like every project I know of uses this. Now, next on the list is chunking. So what does chunking do? Well, if we read right here, it says, make the speech to text split into chunks and calculate as you speak. Lower equals less precise, but calculates more often. 300 to 1,200 is reasonable. And at default, it's at 670. Let me actually pull up paint real quick to show you. So, okay, so let's say we have two chunks of the same audio. We have that one there and then this one here. So it's the same audio file, same length and whatnot. The exact same thing, it's just processing them two different ways. So there's the default. And here we have the chunky or in chunks, I should say. I call it chunky because it's a little bit funny. So default, what's happening is it's recording the whole way through, and then at the end here is when it actually processes. So this whole time you're talking, and then it actually processes, and then once it's transcribed, it's sent forward. You're talking this whole time, then it has to process everything, then it sends it to the language model. With Chunky, it's a little different. So you're talking and you're talking, and oh, you've hit one of the chunks, we split it right there, you keep talking, split it there, keep talking, split it there, and when you're done talking, uh, this chunk will be a little bit smaller. But this whole time, it's transcribing as it goes. So that's a transcription, that's a transcription, that's a transcription, and then that's one. And then all of these get merged. What is this good for? It's good for removing latency. That is exactly what it does. What it's doing is all of this, hold on, let me get a bigger brush size to really emphasize the point. All of this is done, this is done, this is done. It's only needing to process 
this bit right here at the end. So instead of waiting for the entire transcription, you're waiting for this smaller bit at the end. This sounds really good. What are the downsides? Well, you end up with worse transcription quality because right here, these cuts could be in the middle of something. Say you're saying a word, it cuts it in half. There's a little bit of a buffer, but it's not that intelligent cutting it. Maybe there'll be a better system for it in the future, but as of right now, it's just a very simple way of cutting it out as it goes. It also reduces the transcription quality because not only is it sort of interrupting you, like it'll put a period in the middle of a sentence. Say you might say, hello there, uh, scrimblo. It could interrupt the middle of it and say, hello there, scrimblo. You see, so when it cuts here, you see that it cuts, it gets interrupted and then keeps going. Fortunately, most language models are actually really good at like figuring out the semantics of this. Part of it, I think, is part of the training. Like, I actually do believe they are partially, like, trained on, you know, not the perfect transcription like this. But also because they can generally understand, you know. Another thing the chunking does that lowers quality is each of these segments is less used to your voice as it goes. So as it's going here, the default, it's getting more attuned to your voice. Whereas it'll go here and then it's detuned to your voice and then it reattunes, reattunes, and so forth. So that also somewhat decreases transcription quality. Maybe not a whole lot, but again, it is something to keep in mind. And that's why I recommend keeping the chunking rate between 300 and 1,200. Less than 300 and it's just going to be too choppy. And then more than 1,200, it's like, why bother? But anyway, let me reboot our test subject ember here with the chunking on. Okay, so now I've turned on the chunking and it's at a chunk rate of 670. I'm not actually sure if this corresponds to seconds or anything. It's just something you kind of have to get a feel of. But you can get a good feel of it because it'll tell you here how many chunks it is. Normally it would tell you the file size of however long your voice line was. But now it'll tell you how many chunks there is, which is a neat little feature just to let you know how it's chunking and how it's going. And it's something most users probably wouldn't really notice either. So it's just a neat little info readout for you. And I am kind of using some more filler words just to extend the rate of this, just to showcase how it actually works. Let me open up Task Manager in the meantime. How's your day going? Have you called your mother recently? Anyway, so here you can actually see my GPU, well, what's using up all that GPU? It's because in the background right now, it is currently transcribing. And so if I turn this off, if I turn this off, you can see six chunks and it's chugging along and there we go. We've now did that. You saw how quick that was compared to the last one. The other thing to look out for is if you have a real real junk GPU. If your GPU sucks, what's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, if it really sucks, because it's like relatively fast. Like if it's slower than real time, which would only be the case if you have your settings tuned too high or like a GTX 960 or something like that, is that the processing time will bleed into here and that'll actually cut off parts of the voice if you have a real junk CPU, GPU. So it'll actually not record this because it's just a failback mechanism in order to keep it real time and keep it chunking. You, you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel if you start hitting this issue. That was fast. We can make it four times faster. I read the claim for this. I thought four, yeah, four times faster. That's a scam. That's like a grift. Like, there's no way that's real. 
but it was. In fact, I think it's more than four times faster. Well, it uses a new library built on the old one, and it requires the CUDA toolkit and CUDNN in order to work with your GPU. And I believe it's only for NVIDIA GPUs. This is the project, Faster Whisper. And yeah, down here, there's community integration. Some of these, I think, support other GPUs, but you will have to tinker with those. We don't want to run this on the CPU. If you run this on the CPU, it's going to be lower transcription quality. But you could save some VRAM overhead and Whisper Turbo CPU transcription. You can turn that on and Whisper Turbo on. And if they're both on, then it'll transcribe with your CPU. Could save you some VRAM if you're really fiending for it. I'm going to show you how to install the stuff for it here. So you need both of these. These are basically CUDA libraries let you interface with the GPU. Okay, so on this page, they have this HPC SDK. Don't do that, that's Linux only. We want the CUDA toolkit. Windows, there we go. So make sure you click on CUDA toolkit. I'll just link directly here on the page. And Windows 11, and then EXE local. Go ahead and download it. Same thing with this CUDNN. Go ahead, download this library, and you'll notice when you click Windows here, uh, there's only Windows 10 and this tarball. And this tarball has a multi-step install process, and it just works with the Windows 10 installer. I did have some issues, but I was able to fix them in the program. So, <laughs> it definitely was crashing. Probably because I was using the Windows 10 installer before. So if you get weird crashes, you can do the tarball. You have to do like some different commands and stuff. But the Windows 10 installer works. All of this just works. It's not, I'm not kidding. So I'm just going to use that. Okay, and these will both take a second to get done. Okay, so once you have them both downloaded, you're gonna run both of these and click through them. I don't believe there's any particular settings you need to do. One of them may require you to download the C++ compiler for Visual Studio. So download Visual Studio C++. And so if I go ahead and run that, so this installer is gonna pop up. And I didn't get the normal menu, but you want the Visual Studio build tools uh, where it says these are the options to install the Visual C++ compilers and libraries. You'll get a menu. It'll have a few squares. I already have it on this PC. But yes, again, it will be the Studio build tools because I don't think it'll directly say C++ compiler. It'll probably say it in the description, though. And then you'll want to run both of these and install them. I can't record the process because it's going to mess with the GPU drivers, but you'll run each of these and then just restart. And you shouldn't have any weird options to click. You'll mainly just be clicking through them and it will get it installed. All right, so I just successfully installed. All right, and now if I hit record, now that I've installed all of our prerequisites, and if I start recording now, now that we have the faster, now that we have the faster whisper, it should go by a lot quicker. Yeah, that was one chunk. And that went through that quickly on a decent GPU. Again, it's a 3080 Ti laptop, so it's not crazy, but you saw how quick that was. Yeah, that was at least four times speed now. And with the chunking mixed in, it's near instant. It's really, really good. This is also good for your GPUs uh, if they are a bit slower. As long as they're newer, I believe it can run this. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. I'm Sugarcane Defender, and uh, we're doing good work on the software getting some contributions. We have a Discord now you can go on where I post sometimes, you know, people talk a little bit. I just put it up recently. I believe that that is it. I shall see you in the next video.
بابا 